All right, let's team. move on to your Cleveland Brownies, Reagan. Uh, you know, they, they let you down last year a little bit. Just a tad. Kind of embarrassed you in front of the whole world. Picking them uh, to win the Super Bowl with Joe Flacco. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't really. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Reagan's like, fuck the Browns. I'm so over them. Oh, uh, they they have a nine and a half win total. Key losses. Not much. They brought back a lot of their core. Just Joe Flacco. He adds Jerry Judy, Jameis Winston to now back up to Sean Watson, which I think is a very sneaky move because Watson's been absolutely awful. And Jordan Hicks to play linebacker. Reagan, nine and a half wins. Do your oh. brownies surpass that in 2024? Well, to quote uh, a very, uh, a very important person in my life, I'm going to be slamming that under. I got them going <laughs> seven and ten. Slam it! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I love I, I, this I, app, dude. He just pops in from the backstage. <laughs> but yeah, I got I got these guys going seven and ten this year. And and the Whoa! biggest thing for me, the biggest thing for me. Well, I know you, you you're more the stack guy, so you get to know it later. But yeah, Watson was five and one as a starter. But people forget the Browns. It wasn't defense, because of him, bro. <laughs> the Browns defense was like at a historic rate through the like the time Watson was a quarterback in the first six games. Yeah. They were playing at a, like a ridiculous level, like. People don't even realize Watson was averaging less than 200 passing yards a game as a starter. And he had a seven to four touchdown interception ratio. Like it was very bad quarterback play. He was being a game manager. He didn't have to do much. And then Joe Flacco comes in and boy, was he slanging in that thing. And he went four he and one. But he, was, he was slanging that thing, making guys like David and Joku relevant. So a lot of this has to do with not the defense, very similar to Pittsburgh, where it's, I just don't believe in Deshaun Watson. I don't think. I just don't think he has it anymore. He's kind of like Wilson. Like he seems cooked to me. No, so Reagan, if I'm Reagan, just before you continue, just so the folks know Watson stats in that five and one Cleveland stretch, he had a 61% completion rate. Yuck. Seven touchdowns, four interceptions and only threw for 1115 yards. That's terrible. Terrible oh. on a five and one team. Oh yeah. No, dude, that that's bad. And that's my biggest thing here is and Watson will be my X factor later. Quarterback play. Elite defense, great offensive line, but also we don't know what Nick Chubb will look like too. Like, think about it. He was also doing that with a healthy Nick Chubb, where Flacco did not have Nick Chubb. He no, Chubb got hurt week two. Chubb got hurt week two. Yeah, but still, he had him for a little bit. Having Chubb for any games ain't bad, you know. And Jerome Ford yeah. really didn't get established. Nah, Ford's a bomb, dude. Ford's a bomb. I mean, hey, he wasn't bad with Flacco, just because he had a lot of volume. Not a lot of competition. He's not. It's not necessarily a good back. Bro drives a Tacoma. No wonder why he's saying that. Wait, oh, don't like Wait, Ford. What? Don't like Ford. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to piss off Huff, dude. Chill. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I drive a Ford, so I uh, I like my man Jerome Ford. But yeah, I mean that that's a lot of the big things like Chubb's health, not believing in Watson. I mean the defense is great, but it, it really just comes down to that. And they didn't lose anybody, but they didn't draft anybody. You know, they didn't really add anybody. Obviously, like I think Quentin Jefferson will be great for the D line. Jordan Hicks isn't bad, but offensively, like outside of Jerry Judy, they also didn't really add anybody. And it's no, it really just didn't. comes down to Watson. And also, they have the second hardest strength of schedule too, man. So I'm totally not bought on this. Like basically, I'm just gonna regurgitate everything I said with the Steelers. Like I don't believe in the quarterback. The schedule is very difficult. So yeah, I got them going seven and ten. I hate the Browns. I hate Deshaun Watson. I have them at nine and eight. I have them under the win total. I do have them squeaking out a winning record. Just because this roster is so loaded, the defense is so good, the offensive line is so good, Cooper's underrated. I do think Chubb will probably start the season on Pup, so he'll probably miss the first six weeks because he had to get two surgeries on that knee. It was like go in and fix the LCL, the MCL, and some other like ligament shit, and then the second surgery was the ACL after. So that's a lot to recover from. You know, I know I said this last year, but I was like, all right, this is the Browns season if they're going to do anything because Watson's cap hit's going to fucking skyrocket. Well, they didn't lose much, but now Watson's cap hit is a an NFL record $63.8 million cap hit, Reagan. <laughs> 63.8. So after this year, they're going to have to start cutting some dead weight, which I think influenced their draft a little bit. You know, they took Zach Zinter in the draft. He plays interior. He can play any of the three interior spots. Uh, he's not going to play. They have Wyatt Teller and Joe, Joel Batonio, who are both arguably top 10 guards in the league, but they're both set to cost over 20 million against the cap next year. So I'm just saying, I think one of those guards is out of town next year. So you're going to start losing guys along that offensive line. You already have a great supporting cast. 
if you're paying a quarterback 63 million, it's time to go, dude. Watson's got to go. Um, and I have nine wins just because of how good that defense is. Uh, however, they did win. F- they went five and zero in games last year that were decided by field goal or less six and two in one possession. I don't really know if that's sustainable. Um, you know, they did perform well offense on the offensive line last year, even with losing Jedrick Wills, who honestly isn't even that good. Jack Conklin, he's a stud. Dewan Jones looked really good at Ohio State before he went down. I mean, I don't know, dude. It just seems like a really good roster, but I just have no faith in Watson to get it done. None. Yeah, I, I don't either. <laughs> I don't either. So we agree there. Yeah, I mean, the secondary sick. Denzel Ward's a dog. Greg, Greg Newsom out of Northwestern, dog. Martin Emerson, he's pretty good. Grant Delpit looks like the Delpit from LSU. I don't know how he slid so much in the draft because he was a stud there. He was sixth among safeties in PFF run stop metric. Great in coverage as well. They got dogs in the secondary. They got Miles Garrett. They got dogs in the D-line. They got dogs at linebacker. They just, it's all about the quarterback, man. It's all about the quarterback. Who's your MVP, Reagan? Uh, quick question. Uh, you said you got him nine and eight. Is that good enough to get him in the playoffs for you or now? <laughs> you know what? I, I think it's going to be, no, no. I think 10 wins is the number in the AFC. Yeah, I, and if mine, it comes yeah, down to nine wins, it's going to be a weird tiebreaker thing. Yeah, my playoff picture, all the teams are 10, and there was actually a team who we'll get into later because we have a lot more pods to go, but I actually had a team missing at 10 and 7. So, Oh, wow. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. So, But we'll get into that later. But anyway, uh, yeah, my MVP, I, I I, mean, Miles Garrett. I know I was didn't have team. MVP, Depoy, so Miles Garrett. Get, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you know. I got cheeky with WAP, but that's because they just added, like, another all-pro to the team or second-team all-pro, so at least you can make a case where – here, there's really no other guy you can make a case for. I mean, I guess maybe one of the offensive linemen, but I don't think they'll have a big enough impact to could even compete with Mr. Garrett. Yeah, no, Mr. Garrett's that dude, bro. He's the MVP. He's the deep boy. He's probably the best edge rusher in football. Hit him. What? I, I don't know if you could say probably the best pass rusher. I mean, there's it's such a big debate. There's no clear cut one. Yeah, ah, it's true. I would say I him and Watt are the top two. I, I mean, Parsons is definitely up there, too, but Parsons doesn't have a deep boy. So is do. Bosa. I Bosa has got a deep Crosby, boy, yeah. Crosby, Hendrickson. Yeah. I mean, Hendrickson's getting a little crazy with but Hendrickson I mean, and Crosby like, are in that second tier, I think. I think that's second but tier. But still, the 17 and a half sacks, man. I, I know. Mean, it's 17 and a half in second tier. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, I, I don't know. We'll see. All right. But- X Factor, I think we agree, dude. Deshaun Watson. It, yeah. This team yeah. goes where Watson goes. I think it's pretty mm-hmm. obvious. Rookie yep. of the year. Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, they didn't really, they, they didn't really add anybody, bro. Like, the problem is with this draft class, it's a lot of like depth pieces and really not much immediate help. Like, they they were kind of they're still they were still short on draft picks with the Deshaun Watson trade, even into this draft. Yeah, but now finally they have all their picks back. I'm gonna go Michael Hall Jr. Second round interior pass rush from Ohio State. Uh, he had a pressure rate of over 10 percent in each of the last two seasons from the interior, which is kind of that metric that you want to look for for guys that could have pass rushing juice at the next level. So, I mean, if he can contribute as a pass rusher from the interior on an already loaded defense, I think it'd have a big impact. But other than that, man, there's really not a lot of immediate help here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to agree with you, man. Like, he's the only guy that might actually touch the field. I mean, I guess yeah. Zinter, you could say it, you could make a case for Zinter if he does end up starting. Uh, an injury. Or, like because of an injury. I mean, you said he's very versatile, so there's a chance he gets plugged in in a couple different spots, but I don't want to root for injuries. So uh, I'll just agree with you with Hall, man. I mean, cool, cool, cool. He's the only guy that might, well, because obviously most of these teams rotate guys anyway, so you know he's at least going to be playing. It's not like they're rotating offensive linemen. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I like when you agree with me, bud. 